On peut raconter l'histoire contemporaine du développement through international conferences. The first one was in Stockholm in Sweden in 1972. At the time, there were international tensions. The Eastern, can, Eastern European countries refused to come to the conference. The Americans were being uh, accused of ecocide in Vietnam at the same time. So there was obviously a divide between the northern countries and the southern countries, countries of the third world, as they were called at the time. Northern countries, OECD countries, started the first generation of environmental policies and wanted environmental questions to be among the main international issues. Third world countries were asking for priorities for development. Indira Gandhi, first minister in, uh, in India, claimed uh, that they wanted pollution because pollution would mean they have industrial development in India. Those were their priorities. And therefore, the uh, summit uh, showed that there was a big divide between environment on the one hand uh, with the northern countries and development uh, with the southern countries. In this uh, background, there was also the presence of ONGs, non NGOs, non-governmental organization, non organization, and they were also defending the environment. And finally, the whole summit was a uh, failure because the international community was fighting over the priorities. At the end of the international summit, the concept of eco-development was invented to try and bring together around the table all the members of the international community, those uh, whose priority was development and those whose priority was uh, the environment. And also the program, the United States Program for Environment was uh, created uh, and located in Nairobi in Kenya. And 10 years later, in 1982, in Nairobi, there was a new summit, Stockholm Plus 10, but that was a total failure. When talking about uh, sustainable development, people forget about this summit. Nobody tells about the Nairobi summit, and it could have stopped there. But in the United Nations in 1983, a uh, World Committee for Environment and Development was uh, created. Uh, headed by Brundtland, uh, Mrs. Brundtland, and this was the Brundtland Committee, which worked for five years and submitted conclusions in 1987. A number of problems uh, faced humankind, economic, social, environmental problems, and was, was the uh, answer to those problems, sustainable development. The Brundtland report recommended that a new international conference be organized in order to discuss sustainable development. The conference took place in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. The idea was there, were, was, there was a twofold objective disseminate the notion, which had only been worked on within this United Nations Commission, and also get people to commit to uh, creating policies so that the notion became something concrete. A lot of buzz around the Rio conference, and uh, this led to Agenda 21, a number of non-binding proposals, people only committed if they wanted to, and the document was called Agenda 21 for the 21st century. How do we put on the agenda the uh, issue of, of uh, sustainable development? And the proposals could be uh, taken by public and private players. And next to it, there were two international policies adopted. The first convention was about climatic changes, and the second convention, the erosion of biodiversity. Those were international treaties, laws, which were then adopted and signed and ratified by the parliaments in various countries. And they also served as framework for negotiation. Signatory countries committed to participate in a negotiation, which uh, is still in progress nowadays, and other laws are, are adopted, such as the uh, Tokyo Protocol adopted in 1997, which is uh, associated with the Convention on Climatic Change, and the Nagoya Protocol, which uh, is added to the Convention on biodiversity. So big policies are set up, and there was a lot of enthusiasm at the time of the Rio conference. Ten years later, another international conference, this time in Johannesburg in South Africa, 2002. A completely different atmosphere. The results are very disappointing. 
the international atmosphere has changed. The terrorist attack in the United States uh, the year before has changed the geopolitical context. The priority has become the fight against international terrorism. The policies adopted in Rio have not been implemented. Erosion of biodiversity has continued. Climatic changes have continued. Uh, CO2 emissions are increasing. The Kyoto Protocol 1997 still not implemented no new commitments from the states. And because the states were timid, looking elsewhere, were preoccupied by other matters and had done nothing concrete after the commitments taken in Rio, the companies, the private companies present in Johannesburg become the most active players as a substitution. They are really at the heart of the conference uh, and the states do not make any new commitments, but they say that uh, companies can launch type two initiatives uh, and type two initiatives are for non-governmental bodies. A public partner partnership is launched with many new companies, uh, and uh, these are the new commitments for the defense of the environment. So private companies participate in the negotiation and even become the most active players in uh, sustainable development, this leading to the fact that sustainable development is now based on voluntary commitments. The players define the priorities, define the objective, and say, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Second element, which also shows how this was translated in the managerial way in the world of companies, the rhetoric, the rhetoric of the three uh, pillars, the economic pillar, the environmental pillar, and the social pillar in sustainable development. Now, these pillars were absent from the Brundtland report. It was They were invented by the... Uh, main players in the world of uh, international consulting by companies so that the full companies so that companies could uh, use those terms and introduce them in their managerial habits the rhetoric of the three pillars became the pregnant rhetoric even public players started thinking the same way as private companies uh, thought in terms of sustainable development rio plus 20 the fourth conference in 2012, 20 years after Rio, it's also Stockholm plus 40. The summit is very special. It's a short, it only goes on for a few days, two or three days, whereas the previous summits had lasted for about two weeks. And this conference is not trying to review the situation of what was done before. And yet it is Rio plus 20. So supposedly the conference should have taken stock of the situation of all those policies that had been launched at the time of Rio. But no, the summit is quite short, very few discussions. And the Brundtland report is uh, repeated uh, and the perspectives of sustainable development uh, launched in the Brundtland report are repeated. The report from uh, Rio 2012, the future we want, is very, very close to the Brundtland report, which was called at the time uh, Our Common Future. This report is only about 60 pages thick and really summarizes uh, what was said in the uh, Brundtland report. Priority is the fight against poverty. Also, everybody, all the players, public and private alike, must commit to defend the environment and in favor of uh, sustainable development. And uh, all the commitments are repeated. The only novelty is the concept of green economy. Very present in Rio. It already transpired in the uh, Brundtland report, but it's a fairly new concept. And the question is, green economy, is that a concrete translation of sustainable development? Is it a way to allow the notion to penetrate in the policies and the strategies? Or is it a way to marginalize the problem of sustainable development and translate it in more traditional economic terms, such as growth, growth first and foremost, and uh, a kind of growth that has very specific characteristics?